This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video tutorial, we'll show you every step required to reupholster a recliner chair. This happens to be a Lazy Boy brand chair. By using a few common household tools and a few upholstery tools that can be purchased from Sayerite, you can DIY, do it yourself. Watch this video and transform a favorite recliner chair like this to match your decor or give it a stylish new look. Here's Cindy, an expert seamstress and upholsterer, to show you how it's done. Okay. We're going to start working on this recliner today. Um, it's in really good condition and um, the, one of the things that you need to check as with all chairs is that the arms are tight and that the back is tight and this one feels really good. Um, when we do take it apart, we'll probably tighten up the arms a little bit while it's apart. Um, you also want to make sure that the mechanism works, and this one does. This one has a separate seat cushion, so we'll do that separately. And this area of the chair, the back comes off as one piece, and then this part, the footrest and the seat will also come apart, and we'll be left with the two arms. Um, one of the things with recliners, because they do come apart, you want to be careful not to choose a fabric that has to be matched really carefully because it'll be really hard to do with all the pieces separate and then put them back together and make it look right. To remove this backrest, Cindy unlatched a hinge in the back of the chair. We're going to look ahead and show you that hinge with the fabric removed. And if you want to take the, the back back off to redo the chair, move the chair, whatever, you can stick a screwdriver up in underneath here and flip these back up and then the back will lift off again. Sayerite carries thousands of decorative fabrics that will look great on recliner chairs like this. Check it out at sayerite.com. The next thing we'll do is take this part of the frame out and we'll need to turn the chair over to do that. These are the four screws that are holding the seat and the footrest into the chair so we'll need to loosen those. Then when we take these off, this is a special uh, screwdriver it's called a Torx, and it has a star on the end of it, and you can either get one like this, or you can get one that will go in your power tools. Okay, we've taken the seat out of the chair and we're left with the two arms and this is the area where um, if anything needs to be tightened up you want to do this before you put the seat back on in this area where there's uh, brackets here on this side facing me and that can be tightened up if your arms are loose uh, that is a common problem and here is the seat frame and we're still going to take this piece off and this piece off of this with that Torx uh, screwdriver. Before I remove these, I'm gonna mark what is the top um, so that I make sure I get them back on the correct way and get the fabric going the correct way when I put the fabric on them. There's the little mid-ottoman piece. And there's the bottom ottoman. I also have to take the legs off of this and they just unscrew. Coming up next, we'll remove the old upholstered fabric. We'll start with the arms. Now we're gonna just take all these staples out down here on the bottom. You can see that the fabric isn't pulled under and so that this edge is nicely finished. There's no skirt on this chair to hide anything underneath. So uh, we're just gonna start taking all these staples By out. using a tack and staple remover like this, we can pry the staples out of the upholstered chair. This is a tedious job, and it also is helpful to use a pair of old wire cutters that are dull. Notice here how Cindy uses them to pull on the fabric, and she also uses them to pull the staple completely out of the fabric. This arm looks like it's constructed all in one piece, almost like a slip cover, and then pulled down over the arm frame. So this cording was only sewn to this corner, 
and then this was attached and then the cording was pulled over it to finish off this edge on the outside. So uh, we're going to leave this all here so that I don't forget to make the cording that much longer than the, than the actual arm. I've got this, the whole bottom taken off and I'm just going to clean up some of these staples so I don't hurt myself on them. If I can't pull them out easily, I'll just pound them back in. Now the next area that's going to come apart is this part right here, and it feels like there's a, a tack strip in there. So we just need to pry this up. And there's the metal tack strip, and I'm going to pull that out and throw it away because they're really sharp and I don't want to cut myself on the it. The tack strip could be straightened out and reused. However, they're very cheap at sayright.com. So there's a few staples right here also that I'm going to pull out. And then it looks like this is probably going to slip off the arm. There's a few staples underneath this bar right here, so I'm going to have to pick it back up and get those out. Repeat that same procedure for the other arm on the other side. Let's move on to the seat deck. That's coming up next. I'm going to work on his uh, seat deck next and it's attached with a few pieces of um, elastic and this deck here. I'm going to have to turn it over to do some of it. This piece right here is attached up underneath here and it's what hides all of the mechanism when the chair is up and I think when I redo this I'm going to do this in the fabric that we use on the chair instead of this black fabric. You'll see later on that the cambric black fabric that Cindy is removing does not necessarily need to be removed. Looks like I didn't have to take that apart. That's going to stay there. The major upholstery tools that are required for a job like this are a mallet like this raw hide mallet, a staple remover, a pneumatic staple gun, and a good sewing machine. I have a few staples here on the side, but it looks like the rest of it is attached underneath this board. So I'm going to take these out on the sides and then turn this piece over. There are other tools that you will need for a job like this, but you may already own them. If you don't have them, they may be available at Sayerite. At the end of this video, there'll be a materials and tools list. And here's the two pieces that are left to take off this little flap and this piece that we just released from the top. Here's the little flat piece that covers up the insides, and here's the deck piece that we just pulled off. I'm going to keep this. I'll take this part off, the fabric off. I'll probably replace the elastic too because I've ripped holes in it, taking it apart. This is the little uh, mid-ottoman piece. I'm going to take this apart and mark the arrow for the top on the piece of wood also. So I want to make sure I mark my arrow before I uh, go too much farther. And I will save these pieces to use as my pattern. Don't throw any of these pieces away yet. Now I'm ready to work on the lower ottoman and I'll transfer my arrow when I get this loosened up also. Now this piece is also stapled across the front. That's what's making this uh, well in here in the fabric. So I need to take this piece of foam off and I'm going to try not to tear this up because I do want to reuse it again.
I'm going to save this piece and uh, attach it back down when I get ready to put it back together. Now there's the cardboard tack strip holding all this, these two pieces on there. So I need to also remove all of that and then this fabric will come off. So there's that piece and the cardboard tag strip was right here and I need to clean up those staples a little bit. There's actually a line drawn on the wood frame underneath here to follow when you put it back on. I have all this uh, taken apart now and I'm going to lay this back on here so I don't forget to put it back on and keep all these pieces together and then I'm ready to take apart the inside band. This piece is velcroed to the base of the frame when the chair is put together. So we'll put that velcro back on to the new piece. And then this piece of elastic, uh, I may be able to save this one, keeps the um, underneath of the chair from showing when the chair is reclined. And the first place that we need to take apart is right here on both sides. This edge, these two sides probably have a metal tack strip under that I can just pry up. Now at the top there's another cardboard tack strip in this little piece of padding. I'm going to take this off and keep the piece of padding and uh, reuse it again. There's the outside back. Be sure to keep all this old decorative fabric. We're going to be using it for patterning later on. We're going to release all the staples around the perimeter of this piece and that's pretty much what's holding it in. Uh, there's a few staples here and there'll be a few down here at the bottom. And this will all come off as one piece. Up on this top edge we have a piece of cording that's uh, sewn onto the cushion up to here. So we'll need to leave this piece long also just like the arm piece so that we can connect it after we put the back piece on the frame. After I took this apart I can see that they've actually sewn the piping on. It wasn't left long at the corners like I first thought. Um, I think I might leave it long at the corners so that I can make this piece longer so I have more to pull on when I'm attaching it to the frame and then add the piping to it afterwards. And there's a couple staples underneath this wing piece right here. That's what the cushion looks like after we take it off the frame. And it's all sewn together before you ever put it on the frame. This little band is sewn to the front with this band sewn to the front and then this is the stretcher that gets attached and goes around the frame. Instead of wrestling with this and trying to take it out with just that much open, I'm going to take some of the stitching out of this little back piece so I can get the cushion out a little easier. And I will save this piece and reuse it. This is the last piece that's sewn on when we put this cushion together, so that's why I'm taking it off right now so that I can get this cushion core out without wrestling with it. Um, and it'll be the last piece that goes on and then I will close it up and stuff the cushion in from the bottom. And this cushion looks like it's in uh, really good shape. Uh, we could probably add a layer of uh, polyfill to it or batting if we wanted to. Um, I'm not sure that we need to do that. It's still in pretty good condition. Uh, 
and I'm going to leave this together until I get ready to um, cut it out of the fabric and put it back together so that I don't forget how it goes together. There's a lot of small pieces here that need to work together to go around that frame. Uh, we're going to talk about this chair and um, normally recliners get a lot of use. This one is in very good condition so we don't have to replace any of this foam. But if we did have to replace this foam, Sailrite has a product called polyurethane foam with fabric backing and it could be um, glued onto the chair. If we had to replace this, um, we could actually cut out the parts that we needed to replace and add this in or we could replace the whole thing. Um, this comes in three quarter inch, half inch, and quarter inch thicknesses. And it would be perfect for this application. So I have both of my arms removed from the chair. I'm gonna take one of them apart and uh, make my pattern from it and leave the other one together. So if I have any questions, I can have answers from that one. And another th good thing to do is to take pictures of your work as you're taking it apart. So if you need to go back and check anything, um, you can look at your pictures. I'm also going to label this as the out in, or inside, excuse me, inside arm and the outside arm. And you can see that they've stopped the piping right there and ended it and covered this piece up with it so it's a nice clean finish on the outside edge of the back of the chair. This is the long piece of cording that goes down underneath the outside arm of the chair. So um, when I put it back together, I wanna to make sure that I leave my piece long like this so I can finish the bottom of the chair as they did. In the next chapter, we'll show you how to make your own piping with the decorative fabric of your choice. So there's the three pieces that I need along with my uh, cording pieces. The inside, the outside, and this top band that goes right along here. We're using this um, paisley fabric. It's 54 inches wide and it does have a pattern to it, but it's not one that I'm gonna try to match. I'm just gonna center the paisley on the um, outside arm pieces. And I'm also going to cut this area at the bottom longer than this because I want to have a little bit to pull on. And I'm going to do that on the inside and the outside pieces. And the same back here, I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra because this has been trimmed off and I want a little more to work with than what's left there. On these edges where the seam is, I'm going to cut it just like it is to the same size that it is now. This is the spot where the piping ended on the outside and then this was turned around to make the corner of the back. So I want to make sure I cut that just like it was so that that corner fits properly. Out here and down here is where I want to add some extra. And I'm just checking here to make sure that I have this one motif in about the same place on both sides of the chair. So I can see that I have the width about the same from here to here and at the same height here. So I can cut my opposite side from this piece. So there's my two outside arm pieces.
This is the inside arm and you're not going to see so much of this one because there's this comes down underneath the deck of the chair and then there's a cushion. So I'm not going to be so concerned about uh, getting anything centered. This one will work and I'll just make the opposite one the same. And the same with this one, I'm going to give myself a little extra at the bottom and at the back. But where it's stitched, I need to make it exactly the same as it is. When making mirrored pieces for the other side, be sure the outside surfaces are facing each other when you make them. Since this one is the inside piece, I'm not going to be so concerned about having these in exact the same, exactly the same spot, but I am going to make sure that they're level on both sides of the chair. So this is what I'm looking at right here. These cuts are what go around the base of the chair down here on the frame. I'm not going to cut these out until I put it on the chair, um, just in case these are not quite right for my piece. So um, I, I can use these as a guide, but I'm not going to cut anything right now. So those are the two pieces for the inside arm. When I took this piece apart, I didn't, ma didn't mark the top or the bottom, so I'm going to take it back over to the chair and um, lay it on here and make sure I have the right part at the back and the right part at the front. So here's the stitching right here. So I know that that's how, that this should be the top when I lay it on the fabric. So this is the, what we decided is the top of my piece. This will end up at the foot on the floor of the chair. And since this is such a large pattern, we're gonna choose this to be the center of this piece. In this piece, I'm just going to cut exactly like it is. I don't need to add any extra on this one anywhere. And I'm going to turn it over to cut the other one and put this, the center of this paisley in the same place on the other side. Since this piece is so long and she wants to keep it centered over the pattern, she uses pins to hold it in place so she can easily cut around it without it moving. We're not going to show cutting. That's the top. I'm going to put a pin at the top of both of these so that I remember which is the top while I cut my cording and get ready to put it all together. Coming up next, we'll show you how to make piping. Now this arm has um, cording on both sides of it, um, so I'm going to cut that right now and get it ready so I can put the arms together and put those on the frame because I want to see what this chair is going to look like. Um, to cut my uh, bias cording, and the reason I do it bias is because it doesn't ravel and it stretches around the curves, and we do have curves here, so it's going to work a lot easier and look a lot better if I cut it bias on this project. So I lay my ruler with a 45 degree angle along the selvage of the fabric and make a cut. This I'm going to throw away. And then I'm going to cut my cording one and a half inches wide by whatever width I have here. And I'm folding it just so it will fit on my cutting mat. Now when I sew these pieces together, I also want to use a 45 degree angle seam so that when it rolls over the cording, it's not rolling on top of itself and it won't be as thick. So I'm going to use my ruler again, turn it over this way, and lay the 45 degree line on this edge of the fabric and cut it off this way. And I'm cutting with the, you can see the line in the weave of the fabric. The seam will lay nicer if it goes the same direction as this line in the fabric. Then I'm going to take 
the top one, I have them right sides up, both of them. I'm going to take the top one and turn it over and put right sides together. And when I stitch this, I'm going to stitch from this angle to this angle. And I'll pin it and show you what happens. You're going to have a straight length of long bias. This one is already the angle that I want it to be. This one I have to cut again. So I'm going to lay the two on top of each other, cut the 45 degree angle, and turn it over. Um, if you want to figure how much cording you're going to need to buy for this chair, we would just actually measure, and it doesn't have to be an exact measurement, just make a rough measurement. 54 for the, for the inside piece, so you need to double that because you're going to need two of them. And the outside piece, remember, goes down underneath the bottom of the chair, so it's quite a bit longer. So we would say 84, and you need that twice for the outside arms. When calculating the amount of piping required, don't forget to check if piping is used for the backrest and possibly the cushion. Throughout this video, we will be using the Sayrite Ultrafeed sewing machine. It's excellent for upholstery applications like this. So here is where I'm sewing from this angle to this angle and um, then I'll open up the seam when I put it on the cording and I'm going to chain stitch this so I don't have to keep breaking my thread each time I do a new piece. Now to make your cording you're just going to take uh, the cording itself and lay it in the center of your fabric. Wrap your fabric around. There's a tunnel in the foot that's going to carry the cording for you. So the machine's going to do the work, and all you have to do is fold it back a little bit. If you're not Let's using an Alterfeed sewing machine, you may have to install a cording foot. This one has one built in. And we also want to sew this at maximum stitch length. Here we're sewing 6 millimeters. When I get to a seam, I'm going to open it up and flatten it out with my fingers and wrap it around. And you can see how it doesn't fold over on top of itself when we make this a bias seam instead of a straight seam. It'll give you a smoother finish. I have all my pieces laid out and ready to sew together for these two arms. I've got my two uh, long cording pieces. And my two short cording pieces. So I'm going to need one short cording piece first and my inside arm piece. So before I start to stitch this, I'm going to take it up and lay it up against the old piece and make sure I start it at the right place. So on the original piece, it was actually started right here at the back of the fabric. So when I stitch it, I'm going to start like that and go around to the bottom. When we made the piping, we specifically used a long stitch length of about six millimeters. When we make the rest of this cushion, including sewing on this piping, we'll use a four to five millimeter stitch length. When I come to this curve, even though I cut my cording on the bias and it's, it will curve around this, it'll curve a little bit nicer if I do some clips right up to the stitching. You don't want to cut the stitching just to help it go around this curve a little smoother.
Now I have this band that goes down over the cross, across the top of the arm and down the front of the chair. And I can see from the original piece that it was sewn even with the end of this. Okay, this isn't the stitch that we're doing right now. This is the outside arm stitch. Oh, is it? Okay? Right now, this is what we're working on. This piece to this piece. So I'm going to start this right sides together right here. And so all the way around again. So I'm going to start this right with the edges even just like it was originally and try to keep about a half an inch seam all the way around. come to this rounded area I'm going to clip this also about a half an inch apart and about three-eighths of an inch in It's okay that these don't match at the bottom. Remember, we added to the bottom of this, but we did not add to the bottom of this. Cindy's looking for the longer piece of piping for the opposite side. And now I'm going to use the longer piece of cording and attach it to my outside arm. And if you remember, it started right here in this area. And then this is going to fold over that end and finish the back corner of the chair. Let's take a look at the old one. And I'm going to open this up so you can see what I'm doing. Here's the inside arm. Here's the band that we just put on. And this is this area. So you can see that this cording stops right here. So I want to do the same thing with my piece. I'm going to make a clip right here. And my cording is going to start right at that clip. And then it'll be covered, the end will be covered up with this seam right here when we put that seam in the outside arm. This one I'm going to put a few pins in so I don't have to sew it with the fabric on top. I prefer to sew with the cording on top. Cindy pins it in place because she's going to start sewing from the opposite end and she wants the uh, cording or piping to stop at that exact location she just showed. Cutting a few relief notches here at the uh, corner will make the piping go around the corner better. And I'm not going to sew this all the way down to the bottom because I added to the bottom of this and it stops at the bottom corner of the chair right here and then it's pulled around on top of the fabric without being stitched.
So to put the two pieces together and complete the arm, I'm going to start with this edge along this edge again. And I am going to have to stitch with this piece on the bottom. But that's where those line up. And I'm going to stitch all the way around to the bottom again. To sew these assemblies together, keep the edges lined up as they approach the needle. Now this time the piece I need to snip is on the bottom side because this is the straight edge, this is the round edge, and I want to snip the straight edge so it goes around easier. The seam allowance here is a half inch, so don't snip past a half inch. This is the long piece that goes down underneath the chair after I put this arm on. So this is the completed arm. I'm ready to put it on the chair. Whoops, I forgot to sew something. I forgot to sew this seam right here. It would be sewn right sides together just like this and it would finish off this area right here when I do sew it. This piece here we added to and it'll just be stapled right down here and then when this wraps around it gets a metal tack strip that finishes off this back edge really nicely. Uh, the other thing that we noticed when we put this on is that we have kind of a too much fabric right here and right here. So when I put it back on again, we're going to lay a piece of um, polyester batting in there and see if that will take care of those um, places that we don't like. And then when we pull it really tight to staple it down, you won't feel the batting in there and it'll fill out these two corners for us without adjusting our fabric. Cindy will sew right over the piping and she'll also do some reversing at the beginning and the end to lock the stitch in place. So there's the finished back corner of the chair. Uh, when we put our finished sewn piece on here, we had a, gullies on this side and this side, so we want to fill that in with a little bit of um, polyester batting. So to do that, I'm going to measure um, this discolored part right here is the part that's exposed. The cushion is right here and the back of the recliner is in this white area right here. So we only need to extend it a little bit beyond the yellowed area. And back here is where the wing of the back sits. So we're just gonna come a little bit beyond that. So my piece needs to be 27 inches long.
and I want to continue it over here by 12 and then when I start to put it on I'm going to cut some of this out back here so that it's not interfering with the uh, back of the chair when we put that back on. So I have my piece cut 12 by 27 and I'm going to start by putting a couple staples over on this side to hold it in place. We're using the Easy etc 8 long nose staple gun. And I just laid it over the foam. The Sayerite also sells a short nose version. These are pneumatic staple guns that are very reasonably priced at Sayerite. And I'm going to trim this back corner out a little bit. I'm going to glue the whole thing down and then work on the edges. So I'm going to put a thin line of uh, glue right along here. And kind of roll the batting over into that glue that I just put on there. When you're putting the glue on this, if you get it into the layers of the batting, it seems to mold better to the edge. The edge of the batting can be trimmed with scissors to make a smooth transitional edge or as she is doing here, it can be glued and pressed down to make a smooth transition. You will have to hold it for a few minutes to get it to stay in place, but it kind of blends itself right into the foam. I'm ready to put this um, arm panel on and it's the inside and the outside arm. So it'll take a little bit of uh, stretching and pulling to get it where I want it. So I'm going to put a few staples in the back along here just to secure it so I can start making the cuts that go here and here around the frame. There are several tools and also equipment that will make upholstering projects like this easy. Sayerite carries an upholstery toolkit you may want to check out. If you're interested in the upholstery toolkit from Sayerite, here's a quick view of what you'll get in that kit. The old piece had these cuts that went across and then up to cover up the wood underneath here. I'm just going to cut mine straight up and then use another piece to cover up the wood underneath so that I don't have to get all of these cuts exactly in the right place. I'm going to do that for the front uh, piece of the frame and the back piece. Before she staples here, she notices she needs to cut more of a relief slit here so the fabric will rest up against the wood frame and then she can place her staples there.
I'm going to turn the chair up and, and pull this down underneath and finish this piece off underneath here. This is the part here that I want to cover up with an extra piece, so I'm just going to cut a scrap piece that's big enough to cover that. This area is directly under the chair, so it will probably not be noticeable. However, when the chair is reclined back, you may be able to see it. We'd rather see fabric than wood. and then it gets pulled down underneath. As you can see at the bottom of there this arm, there's not much fabric. There is enough to get a few staples in there and that's what's important. So I pulled this down this way first and then I'm going to fold my cording over to make the corner here at the bottom. This piece right here will get a metal tack strip in it. I'm just going to put a few staples in it to hold it in place while I work with the rest of the piece. And then I'll go back and do the metal tack strip. We cut this piece longer because it gets folded under to finish off the bottom of this part of the chair. So I'm going to turn that under and put a few staples in it and make sure I have it pulled tight enough before I staple the whole thing down. Looks like I need to pull that a little bit tighter to get this cording to come down and around the side.
Well, this is the piece of piping that we left long that's going to come along here and trim off this edge of the chair. But I'm going to finish attaching my piece first before I do that. To finish off an edge, we'll use the metal upholstery tack strips. We recommend using new tack strips, though you could possibly straighten out your old ones. They're available at Sayerite. Whoa, whoa. Okay, now I'm going to take these two staples out so that I can put my metal tack strip in back here to finish off this edge and then I'll finish tacking the bottom. Watch as Cindy installs the tack strip. In a few seconds, she'll explain exactly what she's done. So I pushed that into the fabric on the wrong side. And I decide where to put that because it's about a width away from where I want it to end up when I'm finished. Then I'm going to turn it to the inside and start tapping it down. And I'm just going to tap a little bit on each nail until I get the whole thing down. You can see that the tack strip, even though I don't have it all the way tacked down yet, has pulled this piece nice and tight on the outside. I'm going to trim out some of this fabric since it's so thick we don't need all of that in there. An awl is being used here to find the hole that the leg has to screw into later. I did not mark my holes for my legs before I pulled this down underneath, so I'm making sure I know where they are with this tool. I'm just going to mark them with a marker. I may have to trim some of that fabric out to get the leg back in there because this is pretty thick right here, and it's even thicker back here. Okay, to finish this edge off, up here without these ravels right here. I'm going to cut this and tuck it underneath right I'm just going to snip it right up to the seam. It's just an awkward transition for the cording. So I still think I'm going to need a dab of glue there to finish that off and make it look nice and keep it from raveling. And I'm going to just use the cardboard st tack strip all the way across the edge. Later on, Cindy will use a hot glue gun there and keep that edge from unraveling and also tuck it back underneath the cardboard tack strip. We'll not be showing that. I'm going to take some of these staples out and get rid of some of this thickness in here because I have a leg that needs to screw in right here and um, that's probably going to be too thick for that leg to lay nicely against the base of the chair. There's where the leg uh, will go in. So I'm going to trim out around that and get rid of as much of the thickness of the fabric as I can.
time right to attach this piece back down uh, without the, all that thickness there for my leg. Follow the same procedure for the arm on the other side of the chair. Let's move on to the deck. These are the, all the pieces that belong to the, um, the deck of the chair and the footrest. And this is what I'm going to work on next because I'm ready to slide the deck the mechanism back into the chair. So that one's ready to be stapled on. And then this one is made in two pieces um, and it, it gets attached right in this part of the chair frame. The larger piece is the top. I'm just gonna measure it and cut two more like it. Uh, it's about 28 by 11. I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra length. So I need one piece that's 28 by 11 and one piece that's 28 by 8. I'm going to put a pin in the top of this so I remember which is the top. And um, this was, there was no cording or anything in this. This was just a seam that attaches to the wood. So I'm going to flip this over on itself and match up my patterns the best I can so that it's consistent up the front of the chair. And then I'm going to stitch about a half an inch seam across this. And then I'll have my two pieces ready for the footrest. This piece I'm going to reuse just like it is. So I'm going to um, center it on the pattern and give myself a little bit all the way around the edges and then I'm going to just fold it around and hem it right on top of this one and um, reuse it with the fabric on the outside instead of this black cambric. So I'll take this to the sewing machine when I'm ready and just fold this over and cover up the old fabric on three sides. And then on this piece, this is a separate piece. I'm going to pull this one off and stitch a new one in there. And this I'm going to leave here and just cover up with a new piece of fabric. I'm also going to leave this um, so we still have the Lazy Boy uh, emblem on Cindy's there. Cindy's not cutting the fabric. She's cutting the threads that sewed this fabric to the deck. So I'm cutting this one just about the same size as the old one, um, maybe just a touch bigger. Um, and there is some clips here that I'm going to mark to show me where it was attached on here. There's a clip here and a clip here, and those clips will go together when I put this back on. One on the other end also. And I'm going to put a pin at the top. 
And for this piece, I'm just going to cut kind of randomly a little bit bigger than what it is so that I make sure it's long enough and wide enough. And I'm going to center it on the old piece and I'm going to stitch right in this area so that when it's stitched on it covers up all of the old fabric. It's me one day about reusing or cover somebody had asked you about covering over stuff. Right. And anywhere else we wouldn't because if it moves or shifts or has cording or whatever, you're gonna feel that eventually. <laughs> but here, it's not gonna matter. Um, we were gonna replace these elastics also, so I'm gonna do that while I'm here at the sewing machine. Um, I ripped these, and a lot of times elastic dries out, so you probably wanna replace it, even if you don't rip it. So when I'm stitching this, I just want to make sure that I'm beyond this seam right here so you don't see any of this old fabric when we're finished. And I can feel that underneath here with my fingers. I'm going to trim a little bit of this off because it's quite a bit longer than the original piece and my other piece, this one, gets attached here. So I want it to be close to the same length. So I'm going to just wrap it around and see that I have, oh, probably a half an inch too much. So I'm going to trim that off. And fold it back up and mark the notches right here and right here and then the notches that I marked on this piece will match up to this piece. Throughout this video Cindy will refer to the old decorative fabric to see how it was sewn or clipped or shaped so don't throw that out until you're done. And the stitching went from the, the notch to the notch. It didn't go all the way out to the end. So there's my piece added on. And now I'm going to finish off the corners and stitch this down. I'll start on this side. If you're wondering why that second strip that we sewed on was not sewn all the way to the end, you'll soon find out why. As this edge is being folded back and sewn down, she can sew past the one panel of fabric and then sew across at that location. That extra strip of fabric is a fabric pole that will be used to secure this deck panel to the actual wood frame. There's that piece. That one is ready to attach to the frame other than I'm gonna replace the elastic. I'm just gonna cut these at five inches and stitch them back on uh, where they were originally. They don't have to be tucked all underneath here for this but I am going to fold it twice to make it a little bit stronger where I stitch it.
I'm ready to attach this piece to this little um, mid ottoman and there's my arrow showing up so that I make sure I get my fabric going the right direction with the pattern up. I'm going to go from one side to the other side and then I'm going to do the ends. And I'm going to turn this under so this is a finished edge here. And I'm going to cut out around the holes for the screws to go in. And on this side, I'm just going to snip out a hole for the screw to go back into. I'm not going to trim out the whole thing. And you are going to need to trim some fabric out here, otherwise it's going to be way too thick. Kind of just wrapped like a present on the end. So this is the bigger ottoman piece and um, I marked my top with the arrow. So I want to make sure I get the top of my, my fabric going the correct direction when I put it on. And this seam was tacked down along this line on the wood and I can see uh, the staple holes right here so it was this edge met this line and it was stapled up above that. Give it a couple staples to hold it in place while I work with it first and line the edge of my fabric up with the line on the wood. Then I can go back and put the cardboard tack strip in there. Cardboard tack strip will give it a nice hard edge when I pull this piece back down. So there's where we're at so far. There's the cardboard tack strip under there. You can see how it makes a nice uh, straight edge in there. And then this piece was attached in there also. And I'm going to line this up with the foam at the top so that these edges are even and staple it back down. So I've turned this over and I'm ready to pull all of these edges around and I'm going to start at the top and the bottom to pull them around and I want to make sure that this piece of foam covers up this edge of the board so when I pull it I'm going to try to get it like that. I'm 
And since you can see the weave in this fabric really well, I'm gonna use that as my line to make sure that this is straight along the edge and give myself a few staples across and then flip it over and make sure it's okay. And that looks smooth and tight enough, so I'm gonna keep going and start on the bottom. And the same thing here, I'm gonna to try to make sure that this piece of foam comes up to this edge. I'm gonna trim a little bit of this out also so it's not quite so thick at this corner when I pull it under. Now this piece was covered with the uh, dust cover on the back of it, so I'm just going to trim a piece that's a little bit bigger than my footrest. And just staple it all the way around and fold the edges under so it's a nice finished edge. And I start at the top and the bottom and then pull the sides. Before I cover this up completely, I am going to mark the holes for the footrest part of the mechanism. Uh, the next part of this process is to attach this deck piece back onto the mech frame. And I can tell where it was. I want to center it, but I can also tell where it was by the way this is folded up from this part of the frame. So these need to be stapled down, and then this little front piece will be stapled down. So I'm just going to put a couple staples in and then flip it over so I can work with it a little better. These elastic pieces, you don't want to pull them really tight because this piece is going to move as the chair moves. So you just want to secure it. Now when I look at the old piece on this one, I can see there's where the stitching was and here's where the staples were and it was just pulled around the edge. It wasn't turned under or anything and uh, the corner was made over here. So that's all I'm going to do. I don't need to make that look pretty over here. And then this piece that we covered, the old one, that had the cardboard in the bottom of it, 
goes right under here. And I'm going to center that and put a cardboard tack strip over it. There. I'm ready to attach the ottomans now. And just make sure you have the up going up and um, I'd put the screws in a little bit and then put another one in a little bit until you get all four of them in place. Now I'm ready to add this uh, footrest on here and remember to make sure you get the top at the right place. And the reason I'm adding these on first is it's going to make the mechanism more stable when I add it to the chair and um, it should go in a little easier than if we wait and do this later. And I'm not going to tighten these down all the way either until I get all four of them in place. So there's what this piece looks like all put together with all the pieces on it. And I'm going to take this off the table and put my chair frame back up so we can put this into the chair frame. The recliner's coming along nicely. Next, we'll reinstall the deck to the frame. So we have the mechanism um, just laying in here right now and I'm going to put the bolts through the mechanism itself and through the frame of the chair. And one thing that you want to be careful of when you do this is sometimes there's uh, grease on these mechanisms. So check for that first before you put it in and if there is, lay a scrap piece of fabric over the arm and slide the mech over the scrap piece of fabric rather than over your um, regular fabric so that if you, get, if you do have grease it ends up on the scrap fabric. Now we have the mech all attached with these four bolts where we took it out and we're ready to flip the chair up and make sure that the, the mechanism works. And it's catching on the on our table because we haven't put the feet on the chair yet so it will work properly when we get it all put together. <laughs> We do have to cut some of the fabric away to allow entry of the bolt into the frame. After we get this put together and have the, um, the legs on the chair, you can see that this is out a little bit too far on the ottoman part, even though it's pushed all the way in. Um, the frame has slots where we put those screws in, so we have a little bit of play there. So we're going to turn it over and loosen up those screws and see if we can move the whole frame, the whole mechanism back just a little bit so we don't have to adjust anything out here. Coming up next, we'll show patterning and sewing the inside back cushion cover. This back cushion is rather complex on our chair, so we will break this out into four chapters, which will hopefully make it easier to do it one step at a time. This is what the cushion will look like when we're done. Now let's show you the process. The next piece that we need to construct is the inside back, and this piece had this back piece attached to it, and it has all of these other pieces that have to be attached to this front piece. So in order to keep all of that straight, I'm going to take this big front piece off and then keep all the rest of it together and cut it in half so that I have a reference to go back to in case I get lost in the process. So the only piece I want to take apart right now is this big front piece. So I'm going to work on this area right here. So here's the big front piece. And here's everything that's going to get attached around it all still in one piece. So 
So what I would like to do with this is fold this top, this is the top, fold the top in half and I'm going to cut it down the middle so that one piece can stay all together and one piece I can take apart so that I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to lay the seams together here at the top. and just pin it and make sure that it's together down here also. And then I'm going to cut right along this fold. Now I have one side that I can leave together and one side that I can take apart. I'm going to give myself some hash marks to the pieces that go together to help me also remember how to put this back together because there's so many pieces. She'll cut apart seams to separate each one of these pieces. These we'll call facing strips. This half will be cut apart. The other half will be left whole so she can determine where the pieces go. So to put this back together, I'm going to cut my, the front of my cushion first. And then I'm going to take these off one at a time and add them to the new piece so that I get it all right. Um, this is actually a pretty complicated piece the way it's all sewn together, so I want to be really careful that I put it back together correctly. And I'm going to fold this in half to find the center of my pattern and decide uh, where a good place is to have this main one land on my cushion. And I think I want to go up a little bit higher so that this one is at the top rather than in the center in a half pattern at the top. And I'm going to put some pins at this fold so I can just fold this piece over and cut the other side identical to this side. Since all the edges will be seamed, she's going to cut it right along the edge of the old decorative fabric, following the curve exactly. So I have this cut halfway around. I'm going to take this piece off and fold it at my pins to cut the other half. Here's a close-up of the pin you can see sticking through the fabric. Then I'm also going to put a clip at the top and the bottom at the center. Just about a quarter of an inch in. These clips will be used to find the center location when sewing on the facing strips. So this long piece right here is the first piece that gets attached to this piece. So I'm going to remove this and cut it out and attach it before I remove anything else. So 
So here's the first piece I want to attach. This is actually just a straight sh strip. It gets shaped by this seam. And this is only half of the top, so remember to lay that and cut the other half of it. This is the piece that goes across the top, and remember we cut it in half, so I want to lay it on the, the center of my pattern and put a pin. Next, she'll fold it in half at the pin, pin the other half down, and then cut around the edge. So there's what that piece will look like after it's cut, and then when we go back to put it back together, we have the hashtags to help us, or the hash marks, to help us put it back together. Sorry, it's not a hashtag. <laughs> Using this facing strip, she'll cut two of exact copies, one for each side. This is one side that I'm going to add on to the side of that cushion. I'm going to put a pin at the top so I don't forget which is the top. And I'm going to put a pin over here to remind me that this is the side that gets sewn to the front of the cushion. This is the side get, that gets sewn to the back pieces where I have all the marks. And I need two of these. To make a mirror image of this, make sure right sides are facing each other, or sometimes referred to as outside surfaces facing each other. And put a pin at the top again, and a pin on this side that goes towards the front of the cushion. So this edge attaches to the front of my cushion and this edge attaches to the front of my cushion. So I want to sew these three pieces together like this across this seam. They will be sewn together there with a half inch seam allowance. This pin here and this pin here is the side that I want to attach to this. And I'm also going to mark the center of the top piece with the snip at each side. So I'm going to match up the center on this piece and the center on this piece where I snipped it. and then stitch this all the way around to the bottom. It's a good idea to always start at the center and sew down one side or leg, then flip the assembly and sew the other leg when you're done. And I'm going to put a couple clips in the top of this to go around this corner right here. Here, she's coming upon a little shaky corner. She'll stop there, cut a notch, never deeper than a half inch, which is our seam allowance, to relieve it there slightly.
so since I have this piece all still together, this is the piece that I just sewed on to the base piece. And I'm going to go back and do the other side. She'll start from the center position where she started sewing, and obviously the panel's been flipped so the facing is on the underside. Here it is completed. Let's move on and start with the second strip. Okay, now I'm ready to add this piece on. So I'm going to take this off of here and cut it out. And remember to cut, this is only half of what we need. So this piece has a cut right here and it's only sewn that far so make sure when you cut it out you mark that cut and you only sew this far around the piece and then this will get attached to later. This is the half that we're cutting apart. Remember we're leaving one half completely together just in case we get confused. And as you can see it's important to study how it was sewn and if there are any notches cut anywhere. Repeat those in your new decorative fabric if you see them. There's also a stretcher attached to the top here that needs to go in this seam when we put it back together. A stretcher is used to pull the fabric taut around the frame and then be stapled to the frame. It's typically another fabric, a scrap fabric, or it could be the same decorative fabric, just wasted leftover pieces. Here's the little clip that I want to sew to. So I'm going to mark it on this one and then mark it on the other one when I cut it also. And I'm going to put a pin at the top again and at the side where I'm going to sew to my previous piece. Make a mirror image by flipping right sides together and then cut around. We'll not show the cutting. It's over here. This is the top piece. Remember, it's been cut in half, so we'll need to fold it in half to finish the opposite side. Don't forget to make clips at the centered location. Those clips will be used to find the center locations for opposite side panels or adjacent panels, I should say. Because these pieces are a little bit complicated with all the separate pieces that have to make this one cushion, I'm going to put this on here and show you where we're at so far. This was our first round of fabric. And I do need to go back and stitch this into a corner so that it covers up this bottom part of the chair and I'll do that in just a little bit. This is the next piece that's going to go on and it's going to make this curve right here. So I'm going to add these two to the top of this and then add those three to this piece. In preparation for sewing that top piece to the two side pieces, she'll flip it so it's wrong side up. Outside surfaces are facing each other and pin it so that she knows exactly how it should be sewn. A half inch seam will be sewn along the top edge. When assemblies are complicated like this, it's always a good idea to pin them together so that when you take them to the sewing machine, you will not get confused again. So this is what I just made and you can see that it's going to take the shape of the cushion around this corner and it kind of mirrors the front, the way the front is made. So the next thing I'm going to sew is from here, attaching this and then all the way up and around and then I'll be ready to add the next piece onto it. And I start at my clips in the center.
Your only job is to keep the edges lined up and the stitch about a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. In order to sew the other half, turn the assemblies so that the facing is on the underside and sew from the center position out down the leg. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and make this corner at the bottom to go around the bottom of the cushion. And I need a clip there to do that. This is the part she forgot when she sewed the first facing strip to the main plate. This may seem very complicated and confusing, but you can always go back to the opposite half that has not been cut apart or the seams have not been ripped apart, and you can look at it as a reference to what you should do now. And there's the bottom corner, and I'll do the same on the other side. This side will be much easier to see because the uh, facing is on top of the plate, so we'll show this in its entirety here. I'm going to put this back on so you can see where we're at and so that I can figure out where I'm at. Our back cushion is a lot more complicated than most recliner chairs. There are a lot of facing strips to give it its shape. Yours may not be this complicated, but we wanted to show the whole process. It's starting to look like the back cushion. We're not done yet. We need to add another facing strip. That's coming up next. This is the half of the last piece that we're going to add on here. And I'm going to build this whole piece before I add it to the front piece, but this is the part that pulls around the frame of the back. So I'm going to stitch it from here up and around after I get it built. And this already has the cording attached to the top, but you don't have very much to pull on right here. So I'm going to cut it the same size, but then I'm going to add a stretcher to it to give me something to pull on when I attach it to the frame. I've also marked um, top on this piece, so I don't forget which is the top. And also on this piece. We'll cut this assembly apart, pattern it, then we'll sew it together as a complete assembly. That will be done before we sew it to the main assembly we just made in the previous chapter. You'll notice that it also includes some piping or sometimes referred to as cording. If you've not made enough of that previously, you'll need to make more for this. I'm going to make a mark right here where my cording stops. Like that. To help me remember that. And then this is the top piece that I cut in half initially. This piece right here goes around the bottom of the frame, or the bottom side of the frame, and I had cut it off earlier. So it's the match to this one right here. And I'm also going to mark the top on this one because all these pieces are just a little bit confusing. Upon careful inspection, this panel has seam edges and it also has staple edges. So the seam edges will be cut exactly to size, but the edges that are stapled on will be cut larger. And I'm giving myself a little bit of extra fabric right here because there wasn't much left when I pulled this off, so I have a little more to work with when I'm putting it back on. And I need two of those. I'm going to put a pin on my new piece at the top and right here is where it was stitched so I'm going to put a pin over here also. I 
I'm going to leave this part down here long to give myself a little bit more to pull when I pull that down underneath the frame of the chair. There's a couple things I need to mark on this piece. There's my top. So I want to put a pin up at the top before I take my pattern off. Here's the mark I made for where the cording stops and starts. So I want to put a clip there. And there's another clip over here where the stitching, see there's no stitching from this point down. So I'm going to put another clip over there. I want to make sure I get this piece put on correctly and I want to mark the side that goes to my previous piece. So here's where I put the mark where the cording ends. So I want my pin to be over here because this is what I'm going to sew to the previous piece. which is this seam right here. And I need two of these also. So I want to put a pin in the top of this one again and at the seam that goes to the cushion part that I already have made. And I want to match or also make my clips in the same place on my second piece. try to line these up with the grain going the same as it was on the original piece even though it looks crooked um, there's a reason why it's laying that way so I'm going to cut it the same way I don't know if you can see the lines in this fabric I'm trying to correspond with the up and down lines in the weave of this this fabric also and I'm going to leave this extra fabric here so I have some uh, fabric to pull on when I put it on the frame this was sewn. You can see the threads left there, so I'm going to cut that angle just like it is now. And there's a clip right here that I'm going to mark. What's the clip for? I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> but it's there, so I'm going to mark it. <laughs> so this is the side I'm going to sew, and this is the top. And I also need two of these. This is the piece that I cut in half initially, so I'm going to um, just cut half of it and then fold it over and cut the other half. Okay, I'm going to take this section off because we already have this part attached to our the front of our cushion so that you can see what I'm doing as I'm putting this last part together. Okay, so here's our this is what goes across the top, and this is the first seam I'm going to do right here, which is this piece. So I want to put right sides together and stitch right down here. And we'll pin it together on the other side just the same. these pieces back on so you can see what we just built. This, half of this, and here's the other half that's still put together. So this outside piece right here is what's going to make all of this take shape. There is this side piece right here. 
You will now see why it's important to keep one half together. It gets a little bit confusing. As long as you have that as a reference, you should be able to figure it out. And I'm missing a clip in this one. Oh, there it is right there. So here's where my stitching starts, which is that spot right there and that clip right there. And that's going to come around there and make this corner right here. First we need to add the cording in. So I'm going to unpin this so that we can add the cording in. And the cording starts at this clip right here. So it goes all the way up and around this edge and then back down to the clip on the other side. So here's the piece that I showed you which is this one that makes the shape of the side and here's where the cording starts which is actually the bottom corner of this piece and it goes up and around the back. So to finish this bottom edge of the cording so it this is going to show so you want it to look nice I opened it up and clipped out a little piece of the uh, piping and then I'm going to fold it over the piping so that the piping doesn't push out and fold it like that and then that's going to be the bottom of my stitching right there at my clip. So here is my clip and I'm going to cut this a little bit longer, maybe an inch or so longer than where I want it to stop and open it up. And clip the cording off at the same spot as my clip. And then fold it up into itself on top of the cording so that this doesn't push out eventually and stitch over it. I can find all my pieces. So this is what we just did. We added the cording all the way around down to here on this piece, which is this piece. Now we need to add this piece in that's going to shape the side. So those two clips match at the bottom and this is why I cut my piece together because this gets a little confusing. This right here is this point right here. This corner is this corner right here. So I want this corner to meet at the end of the piping and then that makes this side 
when I stitch this edge, it will make this side of this piece. Hopefully it'll be a little clearer after I get it put together. And the same thing on the other side. This corner is going to meet right here where your piping ends, and then that will take the shape of the side of the chair. Cindy will start sewing at that clip. Do a little bit of reversing, and then sew on, matching up the edges, and sewing a half inch away from the raw edge. Notice what she does here when it takes almost a 90 degree turn. She'll bury her needle, lift her presser foot, Rotate the fabric around, lower the presser foot, then continue to sew, matching up the edges. We're now walking over that piping or cording, so the Alterfeed has a built-in tunnel for piping. If your machine does not have that, you'll need to install a cording or piping foot. When this corner is reached, she'll stop a half inch and do that same procedure again, lifting the presser foot, rotating the fabric, lowering the presser foot, and continuing to sew. So there's the piece that pulls around the outside frame of the chair. We'll now do that same procedure to the other side, but it'll obviously be flipped the other direction, facing strip on top. We'll not show all of this. And here's the other side of the outside frame. This is the part that goes along the back of the chair, and this pulls along the side. Here's where I want to add a stretcher, because that doesn't give me very much to grab onto to pull, so I'll do that in just a minute. But that's what that piece looks like. The fabric pole is probably not necessary along this edge because this will be the first edge that gets stapled down. Let's fast forward and take a look at that on the finished assembly being stapled to the frame. This is where I added the extra stretcher because there wasn't much to pull on right there. So I'm just going to put a couple staples in this at the top. You can see here all we needed is really that piping to be along the edge of the frame. The fabric pole that's been added was probably not necessary. Let's go back to our project again. We're going to show Cindy putting the fabric pole on anyway. I'm just going to use this uh, piece of dust cover to add on to here and this old piece so that it goes all the way to the end. I'm not going to sew this yet. But it goes from where I stopped at this corner over to the other corner. We're ready to attach this piece to the back cushion. This is what wraps around the frame of the uh, back of the chair. So it's going to get sewn down to this clip right here. And then this piece gets sewn the rest of the way to finish it off. And then on the old piece, there was a little stretcher that went across the bottom. So I'm going to replace this with fabric, um, but I do need to cut it out and add it as I'm adding these other pieces. It's actually attached to this piece right here. The stretcher here is very important. So I'm just going to cut it out of a scrap piece of fabric. And if I look at the way it's attached, Right here, it's attached to this piece. And when I sew it on, it ends up down here along the bottom and up the sides to where this one stops. So that's the next step for me at the sewing machine. I also have a stretcher pinned across the top right here. 
and there wasn't one there originally, but because there's such a little bit to pull with right here, I'm gonna add this piece on to give myself a little more uh, fabric to pull on. So I'm gonna do that first. This is a stretcher we didn't really need, but it won't hurt installing it anyway. Cindy lines up the corners and then pins them. Just do that on both edges here. First I'm going to attach this strip to these two pieces. So this will go around the sides and the bottom. And this piece I am going to start sewing at this clip that I have in both pieces and go up and around to the other clip. In this situation, we did not start at the center position, but instead started down the one leg, went up, around the corner, around the top, and then back down a leg. And here we come to the other side where the clip is. And here's the two clips where I need to stop this piece, stop stitching this piece. So what I've done is kind of make a frame around the back of this cushion. And this is what's going to pull around the wood frame and this is what's going to hold the cushion. Only one more thing to sew onto this assembly, and it will be done. And I'll start stitching this piece where I stopped this piece. So I'm going to put a clip in this piece right where I stop the stitching from the last piece and start right here and go all the way around again. If this seems confusing, always go back to your piece that you left whole and inspect it. It'll make a lot more sense then. We're coming down to that second clip. Cindy did not clip it yet, so she will do that now and stop sewing at that position. There's where the clip is on the underside fabric. 
She'll stop sewing there. I also need another stretcher at this point to pull this part, attach it to the frame, and I'm just going to use a piece of the old fabric to sew across the top from here to here. This is an important stretcher to install. Coming up next, we'll install the back plate that will hold the foam in place. Just to show you where we're at, before we put the last piece on, I'm gonna um, stuff the core inside here so you can see what it looks like now. This right here is the piece that we just added on. This is the stretcher that I just added on. And that's what's gonna pull around the frame, the wood frame of the chair. The next piece that goes on is what closes it all up. And it's this piece. We'll reuse the old fabric because it'll never be seen. And it'll pull everything in snug around the cushion when we sew this together. And it gets sewn from here up and around to here, leaving this open so that we can stuff the cushion in. So I usually just put a couple of pins in the corners on this to make sure that it's gonna land in the right place and then stitch around the three sides. And a lot of times I stitch across the top and then down each side so I don't have to deal with this corner. Um, I can stitch straight across there and then come back and stitch straight down because there's actually a lot of bulk at this corner and then you don't have to worry about getting that right if you stitch it, stitch it in three sections. So I'm beginning to stitch right here at this corner where all these pieces meet. So I'm going to pull this around the corner here and I'm not going to try to stitch this corner right here because it's so bulky. I'm going to start about an inch down and then go down the side. The only thing this black fabric does is hold the foam up against the cushion. There are springs directly behind it and it will be hidden from view. The bottom edge will be left open to insert the foam. She'll stop sewing a few inches from the end. When you stitch this side, you want to make sure that you keep all these stretchers out of the way so that you don't stitch them down. These need to be free to wrap around the frame of the chair. This is sewn only part way down on the side because it's easier to stuff the cushion if you have some opening left on the side rather than just on the bottom. And this is all going to be covered up by this stretcher. It's never going to show. So after we get the cushion stuffed in, I can either hand sew this closed at the bottom or we can staple it closed with a fabric stapler. Up next, we'll insert the foam in this assembly. So here's what the back looks like. This is the piece that we just added on and we'll need to close it up down here after we are happy with the way the front looks. We have a little bit of uh, extra fabric right here so I'm going to stuff that with this polyester fiber fill and I also need to make sure that the seams are all going one way so that the edges look smooth. So I'm going to stick my hand in there and get all those in order and then stuff these little corners right here. Cindy's being sure the half-inch tail that creates the seam is going the same direction on all the seams. 
a little bit of fiber fill can help solve any issues with edges or corners or areas that are voids. Fiber fill is ordered in a 10 pound bag at Sailrite. After I have the front all um, looking how I want it to, I need to pin this together down here and I make, want to make sure I leave this stretcher free. Don't sew that closed. And this does not have to be pretty. No one's ever going to see it. So I can use a piece of twine and my curved needle. And I am just taking a really big stitch here just to keep it shut closed at the bottom and catching the black fabric in the seam at the bottom of the piece. And I just go across the whole uh, bottom with these great big stitches. And the other way that you can close these where it's not going to be seen and it's not really going to have any stress on it is to use a stapler. Which is actually a lot easier. And staple it closed. If I do it all with twine, when I get to the end, I loop it through itself with a little knot and pull that knot down to where I stopped. And that'll secure it at the end. Wow, this complex cushion is finally complete. Now it's time to staple it to the back frame. Okay, I'm going to start um, attaching this to the frame and I'm going to start here at the top where this cording needs to rest right along the top edge. This is where I added the extra stretcher because there wasn't much to pull on right there. So I'm just going to put a couple staples in this at the top. And this is the other stretcher that I added on when I was stitching it all together. I'm not pulling very tight on this piece because I want to see what it looks like in the front. I'm just securing it so I can turn it over and see what's happening. And this is the stretcher that I added at the very bottom and it gets attached right across here. I'm stapling this piece on this outside edge of the frame and the, the back piece will come all the way out here and cover up all of these staples. I'm going to just kind of go all the way around the chair and put in a few staples on each piece until I make sure I have this where I want it. So if I have to change anything, I don't have so many staples to remove. 
You can see this one was stapled right here from where the old staples are. And then this piece was pulled back around to this edge. Before I uh, finish stapling all of this down, I'm going to put it on the back of the chair and make sure that it's uh, straight and square and fits the way that I want it to. When we look at the top of the chair up here, it looks a little bit loose. And this is the stretcher that I didn't pull very tight. So we can go back and undo that now while the rest of it is secured and um, pull that to get it to look how we want it to. Okay, um, I put it in the chair and I'm satisfied with the way the front of the cushion looks, so I'm going to um, tack all the rest of this down. And notice where any raw edges of fabric are exposed. They are folded back to create a hem in a finished edge. Here's a little void that can be filled easily with a polyester fiber fill from Sailrite. Trim off any excess fabric. And now it's time to create the back panel. That's coming up next. I can see when my um, outside back goes on that there's nothing, um, just stitching on this. There's no tacks or staples or anything. So I want to go back and uh, tuck this up inside so that it's not able to come out and show in this area where there is no staples right through here. So I'm checking out how this back piece is made before I take it all apart. And it looks like it was uh, stapled in here kind of loosely. And then this pulls around Velcro there, Velcro at the bottom, and a piece of elastic to keep it all tucked in. So I'm going to cut a piece. Um, I'm going to cut off the Velcro, cut off the elastic, and mark where the elastic was, and cut a piece the same size as this is. So this is where the Velcro is attached. I'm just marking that so I get it in the right place on the new piece, or the elastic, excuse me. I'm gonna reuse these uh, Velcro pieces. So I'm gonna take them off also. And I'm just folding this in half so I can get my piece on the center of the of this paisley and then I'm going to cut this to the same size as the original. I'm just going to make sure that I add for this to be turned under here and this to be turned under here.
And I'm going to make a clip right here where the stitching stops and then add about half to three quarters of an inch out here where it's turned under and stitched. And the same thing here, I'm going to clip where the stitching stops and then add on this edge because this is turned under and stitched. These are the parts that are going to have the stitching in them, so I'm just pinning them so I know where I need to stitch when I get to the machine, and right down across here where it was stitched originally. And while I'm doing that stitching, I'm going to add this elastic back in where I marked it on my new piece. The Velcro goes right there. So I'll go ahead and pin that in place also and try to do this kind of in one step. And then the big piece of Velcro was down here along the bottom. So I'm just going to turn up a little bit like they did and then this will be sewn on also. Right here at this spot, I just clipped that so that it could spread open and lay flat. So I'm just going to stitch right around that corner. Cindy will go back and sew the other leg of the Velcro and put another stitch in the elastic. She'll do that after she sews around the perimeter where necessary. After this is sewn up, it's time to install it to the chair. We'll be securing it now to the outside back of the chair. So here is what my new piece uh, looks like with all the stitching in it. And when I have the top put on, I want this to land in the right place. So I'm going to lay it on the chair this way and get that in place and then um, mark where this is going to be at the top. So I've turned down a good inch up there. So when I put this on, I want to make sure that I turn that much down in order to get this part in the right spot. And I'll start in the middle and work my way out with the cardboard tack strip. I'm going to just put a few staples in this and flip it back over and make sure that everything is okay where it lands.
that looks better then this corner right here is going to end up on this corner right here and that's what I want and this piece was on the chair originally it's just going to make this edge right here a little softer when it folds over this way you won't have such a hard edge from the cardboard so I'm going to put that back in as I'm working on this This area right here uh, gets a metal tack strip in it, so I'm just going to measure how long I need it to be and uh, snip it off down here. And I'm going to fold my fabric back along this edge of the frame. and put the tack strip so that this edge of the tack strip is along this edge of my fold. And then push your, push the prongs through the fabric. Fold it back to the inside. And I want to line that fold of my tack strip up with this fold on the back of the chair frame. And just start tapping on the nails all the way down and just keep tapping until the whole thing is in. I'm going to pull this pretty snug across here because I want this back to be nice and tight before I fold it up this way. And do the same thing, put the tack strip in along my fold on the wrong side of the fabric. And push it through and turn it to the wrong side. This one I want to check before I start pounding it down and make sure that I've got this nice and tight because I can move it over a little bit at this point. It looks like if I pull this over to it meets this edge of the frame, it's going to get this nice and tight across here. So I don't think I need to move it over any. This will tighten up more when this Velcro is attached to the bottom of the chair, but I can't do that without the chair frame. If this doesn't fold in nice, you can take a couple hand stitches with a curved needle and pull that back down in place. Now we can see on the old piece, this section right here that had the staples in it is this part right here. So I'm going to open this up and kind of do it backwards and attach it to this part of the frame with just a few staples. And I want to make sure that I'm doing it so that this part is pulled nice and smooth down.
so the back is attached and I think I will go back and take a hand needle and just tack those down with a couple of stitches and I'm going to double it and just put a knot in the end of it and bury the knot so when I say I want to bury the knot I'm going to start uh, stitching up here and then when I pull this through the knot's going to end up on the inside And I'm just going to grab a little bit of this frame fabric and a little bit of that, uh, the outside back fabric. And just secure this corner. It's really hard to get your metal tack strips all the way to the bottom of these corners. And I don't usually put a knot at the other end. I just do a few stitches out away from where I stopped to secure it. I'm ready to put the back on the back back on the frame of the chair. Let's see, this little piece of Velcro is attached on this side of the frame over here, so we can pull that down. And the piece of elastic comes down and underneath this board, and this Velcro goes on the outside of the frame over here. And then this pulls down and the Velcro for this piece is on the back side of this frame piece and that tightens everything up in the back. And the reason why they make the chair this way is so that you can open it up and get to those brackets to lift the back off. This completes the how to reupholster a recliner tutorial. Coming up next is the materials list and tools that we use to transform this chair with new decorative fabric from Sayerite. The seat cushion still needs to be made for this chair. That will be shown as a separate video. A link to that video will be provided after the materials and tools list is displayed. Looks really good. I'm very pleased. All the materials you need to reupholster your chair are available at www.sayerite.com. There you will also find hundreds of great decorative fabrics for your next project. Here's the list of tools that we used for this video. Notice that most of these tools are included in the upholstery toolkit available at Sayerite. Click on a video to see more upholstery projects like this. The video at the bottom will show how to complete the seat cushion for this chair. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.